This is 5 on 20 News, where the news is terrible and the newscasters are really shaken, with Sean Madrid and Nick Cerami coming to you live from our studio in downtown Tucson. So let's talk about the... This is 5 on 20 News, where the news is terrible and the newscasters are really shaken. With Sean Madrid and Nick Cerami coming to you live from our studio in downtown Tucson. So let's talk about the elections. Do we need to hold hands? Um, the impossible came true. California banned plastic bags and allowed porn stars to perform without condoms on the same day. A devastating blow to the plastics industry. Uh, I guess we need to face the elephant in the room, and that will be in all of our rooms for the next four years. It's true. We now have to refer to Donald Trump as president, something previously only done by members of the Miss America Committee and Trump's own children. The official announcement was made around midnight as Trump rounded out the night with wins in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and sadly, Arizona. Clinton aide John Podesta took the stage at Hillary headquarters and told the crowd, to go home, saying that they would find out what happened in the morning. Hillary conceded a little after midnight, probably from a bathtub with a bottle of Rubinov. Mike Pence took the stage first, claiming that this was a historic night, as Trump is the first manifestation of a KFC double down sandwich to become president. Trump took the stage shortly after to a cheering crowd of red hatted supporters looking just as surprised as everyone else. Trump said that, quote, I've gotten to know our country and there's tremendous potential. It's going to be a beautiful thing, he said, adding that in five years, she'll be an eight, at least, maybe even a 10. Trump then promised to rebuild our infrastructure, schools, and hospitals. Meanwhile, we will have two times the growth and better relationships, all for only $4.99 per month. Overall, the speech was underwhelming and a bit awkward, more like a barbecue with in-laws than a presidential acceptance speech. It certainly won't be taught in school except as, as a lesson in how to squeeze in the most adjectives as possible into a five minute speech. Incredible, spectacular, and great were repeated as if he worked for a bar that was holding a Donald Trump acceptance speech drinking game. At times, he sounded as though he were delivering a wedding toast, bringing up Republican Party Chairman Reince Priebus, who had the charisma of a burlap sack. Broadcasters were stunned with Chuck Todd ordering that everyone needs to accept this like a suppository or a knee surgery. But he's right. We have to gain something from this experience. Maybe we'll, real, we'll realize that we shouldn't demand perfection from our candidates. Hillary Clinton right now is looking like that former lover we sold short, the one that got away. Clinton delivered her concession speech this morning. She called the loss painful, but said she hoped that Trump would be a successful president for all Americans, and said that we owe him an open mind and a chance to lead. Obama reiterated those thoughts in his speech this afternoon. He said that his administration would make the transition to Trump peaceful and that, quote, we are all rooting for his success in uniting and leading the country. And now we have to accept that going from Obama to Trump is like going from your natural father to a racist and verbally abusive stepfather. But we have to find a way to make it work. So we're extending this olive branch to Donald Trump and giving him a chance, mainly because we don't want to shut him down. We just started yesterday. And let's look on the bright side. Sure, it sucks, but we have to look at what still exists. Puppies, uh, puppies with Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan with Sylvester Stallone, Sylvester Stallone with Donald Trump. This, this is bad. In other news, for anyone in the D.C. area, $3 million in fireworks are for sale. Contact jpodesta at cropcircles.biz for details. 
And on that note, let's move on to equally depressing news. Uh, the Republicans retained Congress, defeating Democratic challengers and leaving a trail of Ayn Rand novels and red baseball caps in their wake. While Democrats made some modest gains in New Jersey, Illinois, and California, it was clear it was a huge victory for the Republicans. Stock markets tumbled overnight alongside our confidence in our fellow Americans. But closed today, all the major indexes rebounded. The Mexican peso also fell 10% in exchange with the dollar, for which Trump claimed credit, calling it a power move. Experts say that this type of instability in the market is normal when presidents change. There are a few silver linings in this whole mess. Uh, Washington has elected the first Indian American to the House. Pramila Jayapal beat out fellow Democrat Brady Wilkinshaw. The former Washington state senator was born in India and immigrated to the USA when she was 16. Her key causes include LGBTQ rights, women's rights, and environmental concerns. And right here in Arizona, the Republicans kept the red tide. Actually, Nevada elected their first Latina senator last night, Catherine Cortez Mazto, a Democrat. And um, she will be taking the place of three-decade Senator Harry Reid. Masto is the granddaughter of a Mexican immigrant and a former Nevada attorney general. Her campaign focuses were immigration overhaul and the selection of future Supreme Court justices. Masto benefited from Clinton's ground game and by using Trump's explosively controversial comments about erecting a border wall against opponent Joe Heck. Heck railed against Trump, even asking for him to step off the ticket in October, and tried to appear as working across the aisle. But ultimately, Masto's ability to energize Latinos secured her place in the U.S. Senate. Also, Oregon elected the first openly LGBT governor, sort of. Kate Brown, who is openly bisexual, won the state last night over challenger Republican Bud Pierce. Brown was actually the incumbent in the race, even though this was her first election victory. Brown served as Secretary of State when she was installed in office following the resignation of former Governor John Kitzhaber over a scandal of influence dealing. The new governor did not choose to come out as bisexual, but was outed in the 1980s. Brown now embraces her LGBT identity and has been married to her husband since 1997. And right here in Arizona, the Republicans kept the red tide rolling. They captured virtually every contest in the state, including a Martha McSally win over Democrat Matt Hines. John McCain seems to have developed some sort of Stockholm syndrome in the Senate as he coasted into his sixth term. Now there is a 30% chance he will die while signing a bill to defund Planned Parenthood. Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio is out, and that is something to cheer about. The reviled lawman has served the county for three decades, but lost to Democrat Paul Penzone last night by 7%. Maricopa County voters have been awfully forgiving up until now. Arpaio has weathered many scandals related to racial profiling, sex abuse, mistreatment of prisoners, and more. Perhaps the last straw was when he was charged with criminal contempt of court two weeks ago, because lying is the worst possible offense. County taxpayers are probably just pissed they have to pick up the $72 million tab for his legal defense fees. Clinton urged voters to dump Arpaio at a rally last week, while Trump applauded his efforts. Let's hope that doesn't mean there's a cushy Trump job in Arpaio's future. And California, Massachusetts, and Nevada managed to do something we could not. Free the pot smokers. Prop 205, which would legalize weed for individuals 21 and over, was defeated in our state. Now, marijuana will remain prescription only for the foreseeable future. The No on Prop 205 campaign was funded by Discount Tire, the Arizona Chamber of Commerce casino magnate Sheldon Adelson, a prison food supplier and the maker of fentanyl and synthetic THC. Some opposed Prop 205 not because they are against marijuana legalization, but because they think the manner the prop was written is misguided. To see our debate with a person of that opinion and one for Prop 205, head to the 5 on 20 Facebook page. Arizona voters approved a new minimum wage. By 2020, the minimum wage will be $12 per hour. The referendum, Prop 206, was easily passed by a 60% margin, showing Arizona voters' desire to establish a fair working wage. Three additional states approved minimum wage ballot measures this go-around. Colorado and Maine also raised, raised the wage to $12, and Washington increased their minimum wage to 13 dollars 
South Dakota voted on whether to lower the minimum wage to $7.25 for workers under the age of 18. It appears that states are fighting the minimum wage battle on their own as the federal minimum wage has been stalled at $7.25 per hour for seven years. That amount of money can no longer even buy a value meal at McDonald's. And Republican Mark Napier beat out Democrat incumbent Chris Nanos for Pima County Sheriff. Napier says that he is a social justice sheriff and will work with communities to acknowledge social disparities in Pima County. He says that his goals are to train officers on how to deal with people with mental health issues and to establish an outreach program to increase graduation rates. Voters rejected Nanos, who was embroiled in a scandal involving one of his deputies, Chris Radke. Radke is accused of misusing RICO funds and is currently under investigation by the FBI. Nanos was sheriff since 2015 when he replaced Clarence Dupnick after he retired. With sheriff's office in the rear view, Nanos can take those RICO funds to the casino and put it all on red. This was Sean Madrid. And Nick Cerami. With 5 on 20 News. Let's take a moment to um, contemplate what could have been. We can be a nation which join other nations around the world in guaranteeing health care to all people as a right. We can be a nation in which working parents can get quality, affordable child care. We can be a nation in which every American, regardless of his or her income, can get a college education. We can be a nation in which every senior lives out their lives in dignity and security. We can be a nation in where everyone, no matter their race, their religion, their disability or their sexual orientation, realizes the full promise of equality that is our birthright as Americans. Brothers and sisters, this is the nation we can create when we stand together and not let people divide us. The history of America and the fight for human dignity is a history of struggle. They struggled because they said, I am a human being. I have rights. You can't do that to me. I need dignity. And unions were formed, and people fought, and people died, and people were beaten, and people went to jail. Here from KXCI to share with you a little of what's curious or quality this week in local music. But first, I have to say something important to me. Today, no matter who you voted for yesterday, we all woke up in a strange world. Yes, it's stranger to some because Donald J. Trump will be our next president, but strange for everyone because we are a terribly divided country. When it's increasingly difficult to reconcile the beliefs of the other with your own, it's increasingly easy to be afraid of those beliefs and the people who hold them. We can approach them with fear and suspicion, or, or we can try to connect, communicate, and understand. This is one reason why the value of music runs much deeper than that album or that show or this front man. From Beethoven to Bob Dylan to Kanye, music has been a tool of protest. Use it. But remember this, it is also a tool of communication. And music gives you the power to communicate more honestly and directly with other human beings than all the politicians and pundits. To musicians, be wise, be kind, be brave in the music you make. I believe that at its core, Music is a means for humans to come together across the greatest of communication barriers. How can we use that now, when we need it more than ever? The only way to know is to start without fear today. OK, moving on to the lighter side of this week. If you're looking to go out tonight and lose yourself in some emotionally intelligent rock and roll, Head to Congress for car seat headrest. Will Toledo's poetic lyrics are the hallmark of this band, so listen carefully as you dance like the broken-hearted punk kid that you are. Also this week, 
The band, formerly known as Jazz Telephone, now called Haboob, is having a record release party. The record came out a while ago, but this is your chance to fall in love all over again. And hearing Haboob live never fails to uplift my spirits. The ever-shifting lineup is always packed with some of this town's most talented musicians. This band is so tight and so dynamic, they're sure to win your heart. And that's at Tap and Bottle at 8.30 p.m. tomorrow. This weekend, the Creative Tucson team went to Night of the Living Fest, and we had a hoot nanny of a good time. The atmosphere of this festival was joyful and supportive with a mix of local bands and touring groups. There were a lot of friendly faces and amazing performances. Night of the Living Fest is our own homegrown festival, and as predicted last week, this year was the biggest and best yet. Show footage and interviews will be going up on our website as we perfect them, so be sure to check that out. For now, here's a roundup of our weekend. Enjoy. Night of the Living Fest, right? What are we doing? What are we doing here tonight? What are we doing here tonight? Oh, we're, we're here, here to, to see, see some, some bands. Some, yeah, some, some music. music. We're here to see some music. No! 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 I'm here to party. Have some fun. Uh, my kid works here. My no crush. Oh, Mr. Jordan Owen. Let's go with Mr. Jordan Owen from Guantanamo Baywatch. Yeah, what's up, Jordan from Guantanamo Baywatch? My NOF crush is uh, standing right next to me, so I'll, I'll save myself some embarrassment and just leave it at that. Let's move it. Shannon and the Clams is my Nolf crush. A Nolf crush? A Nolf crush. Not Bill. You say I milf? said Nolf. I said Nolf. Um, I thought you said Mill. I don't know. You, I guess. My my girl. Who is my Nolf crush? Clam? My girlfriend, Bella Vanek, from Fox Bodies. At Fox Bodies Instagram. <laughs> that one's hard. I know my answer. Uh, it's Ryan from uh, Guantanamo Baywatch, the drummer. Crushes and Nolf, all of you people. Um, all the guys that are on stage right now from Shannon and the Clams. What color is my underwear? <laughs> Probably black. Camouflage. Blue. Patience and uh, say, we say good morning. We say good morning really say, loud, really good prolonged. Morning. Good morning. I had a beer. That's about it. I haven't showered in two weeks. That's public knowledge. I'm not gonna tell them. I'm not gonna. <laughs> if Nolf had a mascot, it would be a fucking train with sunglasses <laughs> to hide how high that train is. Kenny Loggins, I think. Uh, one of those glow in the dark skeleton suits. It like goes all the way. Yeah. Night of the That would be the, the mascot of Night of the Living Fest. Tucson, as always, thanks for coming out and supporting local music. Be good friends and friendly family. Take courage and remember when the Titanic sank, the orchestra played on. I will see you next week.